ladies, gentlemen, the Gunkins Druids, the creepy looking plaguey people lurking in the shadows for reasons we may never know. You know what time it is. It's time for Arnold Howlnet News, the only news you'll ever need because you have no other choice. And you're watching AHN. On the go! On the go! That's right. Kylo Harley. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to show your face. Are you are you going bye bye? Are you going bye bye? Yeah, we're going bye bye. Currently, we're on a little trip. The, the mountains are calling me, my friends. But you know what else is calling me, people? This lovely kit review that we have today. You know, boy, how do I click this? Get, without Gary, life is just not the same. How, Gary, what the? He's not even here. I can't tell him what button to click. Anyways, people, we have the Great Mother kit reveal in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, and kind of like we suspected. This is going to be something unique. It's going to be something different. This isn't your run-of-the-mill marquee. They're calling it an elite marquee, which maybe means elite dollar, baby. No, no, no. It seems like apparently it's going to be a similar accessibility, but it's supposed to be a more powerful version of a marquee that's closer to a journey character, apparently. Remember way back when we had the, you know, the original Road Ahead and they told us that the Great Mothers were coming? They kind of told us that they were shooting for Gungan-like power when it came to these guys, which is kind of nuts for a marquee unit. So let's go highlight a few things before we get knee-deep inside of this kit reveal here. So thing number one, as we said, marquee event, which is going to be taking place this upcoming September 5th. So we're going to see if maybe Elon Musk's Starlink thing actually works. Maybe we'll get some nice scenery in the mountains, doing some great mother testing. We'll see. Well, if we can get that up or otherwise, we'll just uh, stream it from the bathroom or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, other thing, this is going to be a large unit, our second large unit in Star Wars Galaxies. Man, I hope the audio is right, man. I can't tell. It sounds like I'm so quiet right now. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, to you I'm not, but to them I probably sound like a mouse right now. Anyways, ugh, we'll see if Gary can fix it later on. Anyway, second large unit, just like Jabba the Hutt, we're going to have these girls be big, baby, because you're getting a three-for-one special. And as you see, here's the definition of an elite marquee event. This is a rare type event that signifies a unit with more power than a typical marquee event. The same accessibility. And this power level is closer to a journey guide unit than your typical marquee unit. And let me just tell you guys, I just, you know, with looking through the kit, it's looking really good. They have a death wish for Commander Tato and Master Kenobi lately. They must really hate how good Master Kenobi turned out. On top of that, we kind of speculated, but it wasn't confirmed. Great Mothers are going to be required for Balin Skull at Relic 7. So, so far, that makes Morgan Elsbeth, Thrawn, Great Mothers. We're missing one more. I wonder which one it's going to be, huh? <laughs> and then the other thing, we are going to get an exclusive data cron with this girl as well. We are girls, I should say, with these girls as well. We're currently in the new farming cycle for the new Datacron, so we're going to be getting that this week. And uh, I don't see the deets on that. Maybe it's going to be updated later on this week. But all right, one more thing, actually. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, they quickly added a little blurb right here where they say, not required for Galactic Legend Ahsoka Tano. So with that out of the way, now we just got to get into the actual kit reveal, and my gosh, it's a hefty kit. It is a hefty kit. As I said, they're trying to get this as close as possible to a journey guy type of event here. So let's go take a look at it, shall we? So basic ability, energy threads. Love the animation and the look of all these. These look so darn cool. Basic ability right here. Deal special damage to target enemy. And if the target was doomed, as we're going to break down, there's a bunch of different new effects. We have Blast, we have Doom. You're going to inflict Tenacity down for two turns, and they lose 20% of their max health, which is stacking until the end of the counter, which can't be evaded or resisted. That's the key thing. Not being able to resist this max health reduction is a big deal. So if you had 100, let's say you had 100 max health, you do this, all right, you lose 20. So you're gonna have 80, then you do 20% of 80. So it, think of it, kind of, it's almost like armor shred in a way, we're, we're used to mechanics like this. And moving on here, otherwise inflict ability block and speed down for two turns. And then blessed allies gain foresight. We're gonna get over the four, we're gonna get over this blessed stuff in a moment. Blessed allies gain foresight for two turns and non-tank blessed allies gain stealth for one turn. Remember Morgan Elsbeth's kit? I know she hasn't been all that great until now, but Foresight and Stealth are big mechanics in the kit, which is why Night Sister Acolyte, Night Sister Spirit, do some pretty bangalicious stuff with Morgan Elsbeth. 
it's going to get even better. What? You don't like my terminology? Bangalicious. Bangalicious. Yeah, come oh, on. I have a question. Yes. Is Gary just who you yell at when you're having a boomer moment? He, no, Gary, yeah, okay, you know, Gary's a real person. He's a real person. He's like, you don't see him? He's tr I lock him in the basement. He's, he's locked in my basement right now. <laughs> Moving on! <laughs> Magic Storm. You're going to ruin the immersion there. You know? Everyone's always like, oh, is Gary okay? It's like, no, he's not okay. <laughs> it's okay, it's making sure. Yeah, yeah, you should know Gary by now. Yeah, it's, oh, it's 1,000% a person. 1,000%. <laughs> Moving on! We got the magic storm. Zeta, cooldown of three. Oh, man. Check it out. They are gunning down light side leaders in this game. If the enemy leader is light side, dispel all debuffs on all Night Sister allies. And that's good. And then you get to dispel all debuffs from all enemies. And doomed enemies are inflicted with vulnerable for two turns which is gonna help you land those nasty critical hits from the Night Sister Spirit as well as the Acolyte. And then deal special damage to all enemies three times. And if this attack this, uh, defeats an enemy, all Night Sister allies gain defense penetration up for two turns. So really trying to jack up the amount of damage that you can get on the team. Uh, we already saw preliminary damage with Morgan Elsbeth prior to this, and we got Acolyte Night Sister Spirit that hit pretty darn well. So I can only imagine with things like this, with vulnerable defense penetration up, yeah, it's going to be even better. But people, we are not done yet. We have some big, unique abilities, as well as big leader abilities with Omicrons, which, uh, unfortunately, the Omicrons for territory wars. <laughs> Anyways. Moving on. Yeah, I know. Even she knows I don't like territory wars that much. Whole different problem. Night Sister allies in the to the old ways. Unique one. Night Sister allies gain 30% accuracy. Kind of a weird thing to add. Accuracy is one of the least enjoyable things in this game. Max health, tenacity, but can't be revived. But we already kind of have the. I, I think this is again. We already have this with Morgan Elspeth. You might be like, why do we need it here? Well, it's because they don't want Mother Talzin getting her witchy hands on these girls here. So again, making sure that these girls do not accidentally go into that team. It's very much so like with the Veers, a lot of the troopers that we've been added recently have been preventing things like Night Trooper, Death Trooper, Enoch from having a trooper tag so they can't be used with Veers. It's kind of one of those things. This pick persists through defeat and keep moving on here. At the start of each encounter and whenever an attacker, uh, Knight Sister ally or Great Mother is critically hit, attacker Knight Sister allies gain foresight and stealth for one turn. Again, the Morgan Elsbeth unique ability. If you don't know what's going on, check it. That right there is important. We're getting the damage on this team cooking, baby. Moving on though, we get, we're not done yet. That's just a little sample. Whenever an enemy is critically hit, Great Mothers and all blessed allies, we still gotta talk about that in a moment, they gain 1% offense stacking for two turns and recover 2% protection, doubled if the enemy had vulnerable. We already went over that not too long ago. Whenever a vulnerable enemy starts their turn, all Knights allies gain foresight for two turns. We are really leaning into that Morgan Ellsworth unique ability here. And all non-take Knights is there's again, gain stealth for one turn. So we really, we already saw a little bit of it, but this is like times 10 with the Great Mothers. And whenever a doomed enemy, Gains Terminator, blessed allies gain 25% Terminator limited once per turn, per doomed enemy's turn. And here's those Omicrons right here. While in Terror Wars, whenever a vulnerable enemy is critically hit, Great Mothers and blessed allies gain 5% Terminator. Let's take the other hand away. The first time each other Knights to allies reduce to 1% health, here's what you're gonna be getting here. You're dispelling all debuffs on themselves. You're going to gain this new effect called Blessed for two turns if they didn't already have it, which can't be copied, dispelled, or prevented. And Damage immunity for one turn, which can't be copied. Then you get to recover 100% health and protection. Have their cooldowns reset! So this is like Jedi Knight Revan's savior on roids here. They are, defeated when, they are defeated when Blessed is removed. If they were already Blessed, they have 200% health steal and gain 20% defense and offense. And this effect can only happen once per battle. Yeah. Uh, again, my tune up again, I don't want to harp too much on territories, but my tune would be a lot different if this was Grand Arena. This seems like, you know, 
this might be one, I, you know, I don't, there's not too many Omicrons or territories that I apply on my own accord. This kind of feels like one of them here. And I'm just assuming as well, even if, <laughs> against my will, top guilds are going to require it anyways. And then we have the leader ability, Threads of Destiny. But people, we got other abilities as we're going to see down here. We have granted abilities here. Boy, hunker down. We got a lot to go over here. So, let's take a little gander. Nice as your allies gain 30% defense, max health, 30 speed. Always good getting those speed buffs uh, right off the get go. If the allies are night sisters at the start, if all allies are night sisters at the start of the battle, at the start of each encounter and each end of each turn, there, if there are no enemies inflicted with doom, great mothers dispel ability block from themselves. They gain the granted ability fate weaving, and they take a bonus turn. So being able to basically use it right away during this bonus turn, great mothers can only use fate weaving. Think of it. Kind of like Link on Sith Turtle. He only can do Link when he's using the ability. Great Mothers can't use Fate Weaving two times in a row. The enemy leader is Light Side, Dispel Stealth, and ignore Taunt effects while using Fate Weaving. So being able to navigate around. I, again, it seems we, we got more to read here. It seems like they're trying to gun down Master Kenobi and other Light Side teams. So I don't know if I can promise it yet, but it's seeming like this could maybe be a... Boy, gosh. They really hate Kenobi lately, don't they? We'll have to wait and see. We'll be doing that testing later on this week. If all allies are knights at the start of the battle, it's like it's like several unique uh, leader abilities in one. At the end of each turn, if there are no other allies of Blast, Great Mothers move ability block for themselves. I already read, I feel like I read this already. Gains the granted ability. Uh, no, no, we did it. It, it. Almost seemed a little redundant. Great Mothers move ability block from themselves, gains the granted ability, Gift of Shadows, and then takes a bonus turn. And during this bonus turn, Great Mothers can only use Gift of Shadows. And then Doom enemies can always be targeted by blessed allies and Great Mothers. So it's kind of like a Merciless. You know when you go to Merciless Massacre, you throw the Merciless effect, Vader can bounce around. It's kind of like that, in, in a way. And then here's what we have. Fate Weaving. Target enemies inflicted with damage over time for one turn. And Doom for the rest of the encounter. Which can't be copied and spelled or resisted. Okay. And then you go into Doomed, where protection is disabled and can't, uh, and can't stealth. Lose 20% max health whenever this character ends their turn until the end of the encounter. And you can't revive. Versus raid boss, which I don't know why we'd use it against a raid boss unless maybe down the road there could be another raid boss. Who knows? And Galactic Legends, they lose 5% defense. And then Gifts of Shadows. <laughs> Target up their knights as their ally gains blessed for the rest of the encounter or until the feed, which can't be copied, spelled, or prevented. Then Blast, you get 20% max health and offense, immune to instant feed effects, stun, turn meter reduction, assist whenever another knights to ally uses specialty on their turn, dealing 40% less damage. And then finally, while in Territory Wars, allies gain 30% defense, max health, 20 speed. So even more speed, man. And then Great Mother's gain Insta, Defeat, Immunity, while a blessed ally is active. Doomed enemies have minus 30% defense and offense. Whenever a doomed enemy is defeated, all enemies are inflicted with fear. And here you can kind of see those animations. Here's our fate weaving right here. Let's go ahead and look at that. Goodbye. I like it just says doomed. Doomed. Hey, keep your eyes under. I see your eyes glancing over here. No, no, this is only for nerds over here. This is this is nerd talk we got going up. <laughs> then we have our gift of shadows right here. Let's go check out that animation here. Yeah, there you go. Like I should do the sound effects for this game. Yeah, the other one's cooler. And there you go. And there's it. Just to repeat it again, Great Mothers will not be acquired for Galactic Legend, Ahsoka Tano. People, man, for a marquee. Remember, this is a marquee character. An elite marquee at that. This is looking pretty good. And again, right now, Morgan Elspeth is starting to make a lot more sense. So right now, the team is sort of feeling like Great Mother's lead, Morgan Elspeth. Then you have your Acolyte Spirit and uh, yeah, maybe Talia on this team as well. We already saw the, 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 the seedlings of something that could be really good. But now with this, we're taking it to the next level. And of course, of Datacrons and all that. Yeah, you better believe this is going to get a little crazy. So people, stay tuned. We're going to have another episode later on this week checking us out. Hopefully, we have uh, interwebs to kind of get you all this lovely test. I'm excited to try this out. I'm a big fan of where the Night Sisters are right now. But, man, getting this, phew, boy, if this can take down another Galactic Legend, guys. But all I could say is they hate Master Kenobi. They hate Commander Tano. Just, even Ezra's kit. We just had his kit reveal. And that's super anti-Commander Tano as well. Anyways, any last words before we head out of here, girl? Her mind is blown. Let's see are your guys' mind blown? <laughs> we going bye-bye. Yeah. All right, everyone. 
This is the king of should be God to get the mobile game of the eighth day of creation, and thus the premier of the multiverse of video gaming realm, the rightful heir and ruler first, his name of Analdron and the beautiful Kyber Empire. And just one more reminder, it's always great to be in the Empire today. I'll catch you guys later. Someone, Kylo, roll out the outro.